Okay, so this one is uh, the Battle of Lincoln, 1141. Uh, Stevens got a siege of Lincoln Castle underway. <coughs> and hmm, I guess Gloucester shows up. I don't know who Gloucester is. Uh, with a bunch of Welsh, <laughs> and ends up uh, capturing Stephen in the resulting battle. And this one has some issues that I had to go look up, and there's no errata for the game. So I previously I just had kind of blown off, hey, is there errata? Because I hadn't run into anything that wasn't fairly obvious to me, even if I made some statements that show that my concept of obvious doesn't necessarily parse the rules perfectly. Uh, and we'll go through the setup situation because that's, that's where the questions are. So uh, this side is Stephen's forces. <coughs> and I believe he has, let's see, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it may be the veteran pinks, are they BC? Yeah, they're BC. Uh, is orange horse or BB? No, it's the, uh, the Gloucester's heavy horse here. These are B, uh, that's a crown, so. I may not want that there. Um, but the regular horses are marked BB. Now, that is correctly reflected back here for the heavy horses. This way. Um, it's different from some of the other formations which have the heavy horses as BC, but the crown horses have a B on the back side, so they're a little better. Which makes sense, but it doesn't quite reflect what's here. But in this case, the entire dark blue wing is BB. Well, for the horses, it's BB, but the scenario instructions give it as BC. I'm going to play with the counters as they are. Uh, I don't think it makes that big a difference. They're still equally easy to capture. It's just they can fight a little better when they're flipped <coughs> or to take out. Um, for the chits, there's something interesting here, which is Stephen does not have the horsey and archer chit. Now, he has both horsies and archers. The horses are here. Okay, not having the horsey chit makes his horses a lot less effective. That's fine. Little baronial forces, say eh? so. They may not be very well motivated for Stephen's cause, but he does have a couple of archers here too. And by taking the archer chit away, that essentially turns them into rabble. <laughs> um, they're levy units. They can never fire, and they don't have a shield marker on them. So they can't shield the wall. So they're probably spearmen or something like that. Uh, and this is a way to represent them. That's interesting. Okay, special rules for this. Otherwise, the chits are the same with initiative going to Stephen. And first turn going to the Angabines under Gloucester. Um, the game's got some interesting set factors to it as well. So. The green wing has a single crown on it. And it's got a number of special rules, but one of them is it's going to end the game when that crown unit is defeated, is uh, destroyed, because that will be Stephen's capture. All right, he's got the Eeps and a Richmond, uh, which is the pink and the light green. That's these guys here. As long as he has the initiative chip, he can treat them as a single wing. 
for purposes of issuing commands and wing integrity, but it won't count for royal defections, which is another special role. And the Eeps wing, the light green, are all plus one on their uh, combat quality, whatever the class. Um, which means they start out as A's and they may drop. I know the, those guys do, these guys do not. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to remember things like that, but keeps the counter mix low. Uh, a dreadful and unenduring mass of Welsh. That's these red guys here. Whenever either of the blue wings are issued two commands, the red wing can participate in one of those commands. If you use a flag, it has the right to participate in the other one. Obviously, it's not going to participate in a horsey command, but <coughs> a flag horse, it'll do nothing. Um, the red wing can also be given uh, two commands normally, but again, the counters aren't sufficient here. These are all considered levies. So they're A quality levies, whatever that means. <laughs> They'll be interesting. Uh, royal defections. Okay, this does not apply to the green wing, and that's the dark green only. That's Stephen's own forces. Whenever uh, a blessivin, see Stephen a blah, blah, uh, roll the, uh, roll the die and add the number of eliminated units on that wing. If the total is above eight, the whole wing leaves the battle, and it's either gonna score as victory points or as a minimum of five extra victory points for the flight, including the cost. Am I right, minimum? No, maximum of five. So, yeah. Uh, so you don't, yeah. <laughs> In terms of counting that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, I'm going to count the points that would be generated from it. If it's over five, I'm going to make some change or whatever uh, within that, that force. That should be fairly easy to do. I'm going to put the rest of the units back in the uh, counter tray. Okay. That should be it, other than the victory conditions. The victory conditions here, standard two for horse and veteran, one for levies. And remember, these guys are levies for all purposes. So there's no infantry. Um, two for the crowned units, with one exception. Stephen doesn't count as any victory points when you kill him. Uh, the Blessivin player checks for victory at the end of every turn. He has to get 16 victory points in order to win. Once he hits that, it's game over. So if he can keep Steven from being captured and fight the battle out, even if he's kind of losing it, he still wins it. Um, however, if the Angovin player captures Steven, he checks the, the game ends immediately and he counts victory points. If he has more victory points than the Blessivin player, he ends up getting the win. Otherwise, Stephen wins. Well, Stephen loses in that case because he's being dragged off to jail. But his, his forces have won the battle by losing their king or something like that. Again, I don't really understand. Uh, at least in this one, there's some understanding of what would happen as the, the battle, you know, the assumption is that Stephen's forces will just disintegrate without him and they end up not. And then it is, how well did you do in the battle? Um, why in particular you still win when you lose Stephen? Well, that's got to be a game balance issue um, more than anything else. All right, we're not going to start right away, but I just uh, wanted to give the starting situation. Please excuse the noise, there's a cooking fan on, but uh, I'm trying to figure out the, it's been a couple of days, but I see the special rules, I'm trying to figure out the tactics that the Scots kind of want to take, or, no, sorry, not the Scots, 
uh, I guess the aim of it's going to take. The problem is, I've got two things here. Now, I can sort of partially combine them, i.e. this can take one of those orders. But this all counts as one wing as long as he's got initiative. It gives the initiative way he loses that. So, I could advance forward attack with one wing, bring the other wing up, and be in contact and combat for a while, which is kind of nice. A's are really good on attack, but these are levies, so they really suck in some other ways. And that A doesn't help them there. Um, the, it hurts their attack, so it kind of cancels out, say, the A a bit. But then they're weak on defense. Um, swinging these up and getting the first strike in might be useful, except, oh look, I'll be shooting, I'll be killing the bowmen. Um, the bowmen probably aren't going to be terribly useful. A small a couple of bow units. I'm going to waste a chit to fire off some arrows. Screw that, man. We're just going to leave them behind. Which is not entirely ahistorical either. Uh, although the bowmen conceivably should be shooting when they have uh, opportunity. So here, they would be shooting as you engage. But then it, as you got closer, they would stop. Um, these guys, uh, one would hope, these guys are my other option. I can start moving them up, but what do they really do? They're good units, there's no question. But if this is gonna hit me, it's these guys I'm gonna want. I am gonna, I think, I don't know. I, I'm just tossing it in my head and I, I can't come up with any start that I like. The wraparound isn't too bad. I'm gonna try something a little crazy here. I'm gonna do a double move. I couldn't pull this kind of action off in an actual battlefield. Facing doesn't matter. I probably should keep them facing by side rather than how they're actually probably faced. Yeah, we'll throw these back. I don't know what difference it makes. Oh, I didn't get a double move with the uh, Welsh. So I'll stay here. Great. All right. <laughs> to die. I got to think a little bit with Blah's forces. Um, because this is not the situation I thought I'd be facing. A whole hell of a lot of movement. I'm going to run the combats here. I don't know if it's worth rolling the dice for everything. I kind of don't like doing that. A pretty good string of hits down here, and then things kind of get an exchange, uh, an attacker retreat here. But this was, this was kind of iffy. It was one levy going up against another. That's never very good. Uh, over here, and you can see we reduced them down to C's. That's a big deal. They're not going to hurt us as much now. Um, over here, I did a two to one on this because I had a. Uh, I had an attack or retreat that would possibly cause my line problems. Otherwise, I was going to use two units, a veteran with a bonus over on this unit, but I thought the retreat was more important to prevent from causing the issues. Uh, that is going to throw things into the Angovans, and here I got to throw these into play. I'm going to be doing the move in combat, and I'm going to use the combat chip, I guess, for all those Welsh to see what they can do about it. The movement's not going to be too exciting. We're going to be coming around the flank here. Take that big A combat class away. <laughs> Drop it down to a C. These guys become very ineffectual. So, trying to arrange something so that you can get first strike with the Welsh. That seems to be pretty key towards this working out well because uh, 
a lot of damage can be done. Over here, not much. We had an exchange over here and an exchange here. The, the retreat back here. You don't want to advance often in this game because advancing means you maintain contact with the enemy and that means he can attack you without wasting a movement chip. <laughs> you know? Um, <clears throat> seems like a weird reason not to want to advance, but there's no real advantage to pushing the attack. The only thing that might be is if you're pretty much invulnerable, which there's no such thing, uh, if you're advancing, you're probably pushing into an enemy line of forces, then and they can get enough minuses that even crappier troops could hit you, um, then what happens is there's a chance you're going to get hurt. And the chance that you're going to get hurt happens to you before you get your advantage of being adjacent to him so that you don't have to move to attack. And there's a chance your forces are going to withdraw anyway, so you're probably going to need move attack. That just is the way it seems to go. And that pushes us back over here, and I don't know. It shows the bonus attack, because a lot of units were engaged at that moment. Um, a lot of damage done. Let's see, this Welsh beaten up, and some hits, well, this one didn't do anything, but some hits over here. And, uh, well, didn't move the die. I hope I did things right. Um, I did not do a move and bring up additional units because I was in um, contact with enough units that the double attack still made more sense, I think, especially since some of the units had been hit. <clears throat> getting getting the uh, the raise in combat class seemed important, and that leaves me with something similar here. Are these three Welsh worth it, or do I just concentrate on trying to plow into there? A choice. I mean, it's either use the Welsh, or they only get one action, in which case they're not in contact. So I'll do the double attack here as well. until after the combat result. This guy was actually dead. He didn't maintain wing integrity. Some of the losses here broke him apart. Remember, these are all levies. Uh, the attacks were somewhat successful. We killed a couple of units, including a crown. Not Steven. But, I did notice one thing that annoys the hell out of me. The pink and red being on different sides. Man, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> I understand the need to like reuse the counter mix for battles, but those colors just look too close and I feel like they're sort of the same size. It's not like I don't recognize them. It's they're, they're different enough that I can see the difference usually. Today I'm having a little trouble, um, which adds to the problem. But I kind of stopped myself when I killed the first pink unit saying, wait, all the red stuff's here, you know. Um, I don't know if there's a solution. One thing I noticed is these suckers, because I didn't move them up early, maybe I should have instead, they're not really in range to make a strike yet, which means they're not, I couldn't bring them into the battle instead of using the, these guys. It's the kind of thing you have to keep in mind with this game is, so. Once units get engaged, it's, you're probably not bringing units up from far away. You're going to need to keep the advantage of, I've got the attack right now, I've got to trim the enemy's forces. So unless you've got troops that can slam in from another wing, you're probably not going to do it. Now, you may not want to slam that other, move that other wing up because it's another wing you have to deal with that's engaged and you don't have enough counters to deal with all the wings. Uh, how that works in terms of historical accuracy, I mean, there's certainly times when Medieval armies didn't all engage at once, didn't all get engaged for the whole battle. Uh, so it helps provide reasons for that. However, once units are engaged, they usually don't just stop doing damage to each other when they're in line against each other. And that's something that I feel the system doesn't represent very well. 
even if the gestalt kind of makes up for that somehow. And we did a move and fight with the two wings that we're allowed to do. A little bit of an attack here. This was kind of an odd case because I did advance here. The reason I advanced, to pin these units down so that they don't just keep swinging around and go trying to hit Steven. Um, they may not really want to at this point. There's four victory points here to three, four, five here. So it's still a close game, but I, I certainly didn't want to give him the opportunity to kind of be deciding when the game ends. Steven's not going to get engaged if I can help it. And that's important because he's a fair amount of forces here. Uh, over here, we didn't do any advances, but we're picking on those poor Welsh. And that looks to me like it's going to be a move in combat with the Welsh trying to launch an attack. I've only got one left that's worth its salt. Results of that, uh, we're really cleaning up there. Point wise, hey, we're worried about 16 victory points over here. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're getting close to winning the battle outright. He can't win the battle without capturing Stephen, and his firepower for doing so seems to be being reduced. At least the Welsh are pretty much gone. In fact, they are gone, they just don't know it yet. At the beginning of his next turn, they're going to fail their wing continuity, and that's going to or integrity, and that's going to all go away. <sighs> Which means I don't actually have to attack them and risk anything. That be here is being kept alive by this veteran. Um, we did the standard move and attack. Didn't get much. I'm not hitting this because it's just going to play. The whole wing is just going. No, it's worth, what, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Definitely getting there. Uh, don't know what our Angovins are going to do here. I feel kind of like i got to bring these suckers in. I can't possibly win the battle without them. However, I've got a crown risked up here, and I almost feel like I need to keep using these to do something. <sighs> I don't know. Doing an attrition fight obviously isn't going to work. I'm probably taking too long to do this, but double move here, flung these guys forward, avoiding the annoying little guys in the front. These are, uh, these are about the one, two, three, four. Huh, these guys are dead actually. I don't know how long ago that happened, but oops. <laughs> Shouldn't have split my wing. Bad move. Well, that puts him in the lead, which means if he can kill Steven, and that might have changed things had I hit there um, uh, in my choice of whether or not to attrition. It's only a couple of points, but it does put me in the lead, 13 to 11 or so. But sometimes you don't notice these things until you notice them. And uh, on his turn, yeah, this has a veteran locking it into place, so it's okay. Um... Well, that made life a little more uh, random. Oh, I don't know what to do. I mean, do I go for points? If I can kill this, I need one more point and it's over. And that's very attractive. On the other hand, maybe I need to tie those up so that they don't have Steven. I don't know. Let's the game here, so let's take a look at it. Oh, I'm going to launch move attack. Already did it. Over here, this is the big attack. Veteran versus veteran is plus one. Um, but I've got two down on it. So I'm at minus one on a B. That's not going to do it. Oh, yeah, it does. It's an exchange. I'll take this hit. Let me take these. Check my points. Eight, nine, uh, eight and seven is 15. I'm one point away. Uh, do I want to advance? Not particularly. Well, there's no real harm in it. All right, so here I need one more kill. So I've got, unfortunately, Levy, but that's okay. Uh, that gives me a plus one, but I cancel it out with that. On a B, an exchange is all I need. And then the game's over. I didn't get an exchange, I don't think. I got an attacker retreat, which is not a terribly good result. I could throw my flag in. Uh, 
I gotta think about this because once I throw my flag in, I don't get to move these two together, but they're pretty badly beaten up. However, am I likely to get a point with any attack? It's likely that I'll get a point somewhere anyway. So I think I'm gonna hold on to that and hand the die over here, even though I've got, you know, a shot at ending the game right away. I think I'm safer not doing so. A good effect, we bounced off of uh, Steven's wall of troops. And now we're in a pretty good position to do our own move and attack with these two lines, trying to get one more point picked off. Situation as before, we pick a B. Uh, we got a net modifier of minus one. I'm not gonna kill it on a minus one. But we're going to do something to it. And then here, we got a B at a net of zero, which could very well kill it. That's a defender retreat. The asterisk is we could exchange for the shield wall. So we don't get our points. Do we want to advance here? I think so, because we're causing him some real problems. Now do we want it? <sighs> if we blow the flag, we don't get both of these attacks in. This attack's fairly likely to work. Uh, blow the shoot. This attack's fairly likely to work, especially if we flag it. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're now a double, uh, no. It's only, uh, it's only up one level of pitch battle. It's not like charges. We're on an A at a minus one. That's pretty good. Defender retreat, he's so blocked up, that's game, we've got our 16 points. Boom. Steven stays king. <laughs> pretty awesome. All right, and this one is the Battle of Lincoln.